हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर राजेंद्र साहू कंसल्टेंट पेन स्पेशलिस्ट फ्रॉम न्यूरन पेन क्लिनिक एंड केम्स हॉस्पिटल भुवनेश्वर वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सो दिस सम ऑफ दिस वीडियोज आर एम एस के अल्ट्रासाउंड वीडियोज बेसिकली द आइडिया इज फॉर द एजुकेशन फॉर द डॉक्टर्स टू गेट बेनिफिटेड फ्रॉम दिस वीडियोज सो इन दिस वीडियो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू हाउ टू स्कैन द मेडियन नफ आइडेंटिफाई एंड स्पेसिफिकली इन द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ ए कार्पल टनल सिंड्रोम आई एल स्टार्ट स्कैनिंग इन द रिस्ट एंड देन स्लोली गो ऑल द वे ऑफ to the elbow from elbow to wrist i'll show you because for those who are novices you know in the beginning they may find it little difficult to identify the median nerve in the wrist okay so let us start here so so this is a high frequency linear probe okay i have done enough setting there in my ultrasound probe for you can choose the highest frequency so what i see in the screen the left of the screen is radial one can see the radial artery there yeah that is radial artery pulsating and this side is ulnar okay one can see the ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve just ulnar nerve uh, yeah that that is ulnar nerve and you see the bone there so that is the pc from there okay so in this scanning so if i kind of momentarily freeze this you know but you see one bone on the other side is scaphoid that is the pc from there you can see both the arteries radial artery ulnar artery you can see the ulnar nerve very nicely like honeycomb appearance okay now because of if i toggle the probe a little bit what you see now is no can you just freeze it for a moment yeah so what you see now that is the flexor retinaculum the small hypoechoic line that is the flexor retinaculum okay see here the flexor retinaculum goes below the ulnar artery and the nerve that means this part is called gyan's canal the flexor retinaculum or the transverse carpal ligament forms the floor of the gyan's canal so that is the flexor retinaculum this structure is your median nerve and these are all tendons hyperechoic tendons the there are nine tendons in total one is flexor pollicis longus there are four flexor digitorum superficialis four flexor digitorum profundus so why do why do i say that that is median now see there is a bit of honeycomb appearance there flexor pollicis longus tendon okay so that uh, goes to this big the other tendons move the finger like this so you see those movement fdas and fdp those tendons see the nerve on the top that is the median nerve elliptical shaped nerve okay so i will at the distal wrist crease i'll take the image freeze go to my caliber manual and try to measure the cross sectional area of the nerve so this is around okay came out will be 12 to 13 mm square actually so that means suggestive of some carpal tunnel syndrome so normally the cross sectional area of the nerve is less than 9 or 10 mm square so for one to say that is carpal tunnel syndrome in addition to the symptoms the nerve cross sectional area has to be more than 11.5 to 11 or 12 mm square that definitely carpal tunnel syndrome it can be mild variety when it is more than 14 we call it a moderate more than 14.8 or 15 we call this severe form of carpal tunnel syndrome so have a look at that nerve slowly i'll go up as i slowly go up the nerve is coming down 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 the small muscle appeared that muscle is your pronator quadratus that now that muscle that flat rectangular shaped muscle is pronator quadratus so typically in a carpal tunnel syndrome we also measure the cross sectional area of the nerve like this this nerve at the pronator quadratus proximal pronator quadratus so we see the difference from the distal to the proximal at the pronator quadratus level and also measure that in term in carpal tunnel syndrome so that is enough the there you can see the pronator quadratus deep there that one I'm slowly going up see the median nerve that is the median nerve that is the median nerve 
if he moves the thumb 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 so that muscle is thumb flexor yeah that is flexor pollicis longus fingers fingers this this muscle is flexor pollicis flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum profundus deep muscle the, the nerve is traveling between these two muscles i'm slowly going up you can see the median nerve there that's median nerve there median nerve median nerve median nerve slowly going up now i'm about to reach the elbow here is elbow and this is the brachial artery pulsating and that is the median nerve on the medial side so that is a pronator teres muscle that can that muscle is pronator teres and slowly goes between two heads of pronator teres so these are two heads of superficial deep heads of the pronator teres and this artery will divide into two branches ulnar artery this is into two branches so now this nerve will appear between the fdas and fdp muscle and will travel all the way so the median nerve this one that one going there 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 see as i approach the wrist the nerve travels from a deeper place suddenly goes up to the surface so for you to get a best image of the nerve one has to tilt the probe towards the fingers so that is called anisotropy okay so i'm reaching the wrist there so the nerve there that is enough that is enough nerve no 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 and i am at the wrist now so here what you see radial artery and this is the fcr flexor carpi radial tendon this is so that is flexor pollicis longus and these are all fds fdp so you see the median nerve there just to show you the other side this is the ulnar artery and that is the ulnar nerve there this is at the gyal scala ulnar artery ulnar nerve the ligament on the top which forms the roof is the volar carpal ligament so this way one can identify the median nerve starting from the wrist go all the way up to the elbow appropriately identify the nerve and when it comes to the procedure one can very easily carry out the procedure safely and effectively thank you for watching